Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about two awesome features of ControlNet. One of them is brand new, it's called Reference Only. And the other one we're going to be talking about is called HED. Now if you didn't see my last ControlNet video, it's probably smarter to check that out first. It covers the installation and the basics for how to use a lot of this stuff. This video is going to make a few assumptions and one of them is that you know some of that. So with all that in mind, hopefully this won't be too confusing. But let's dive right in. Now our previous video took a look at canny and we looked at depth. In both instances you saw a preprocessor take a look at the image and it gave us back an outline in the case of canny and in the case of depth we got back a topographical kind of depth map. And when you use that kind of stuff as a key you can get really good results that look a lot like the original image. So if that's what you're trying to do, if you're trying to make a stable diffusion type graphic and make it look like a graphic that you're already kind of looking at, or a real photograph in a certain pose or something along those lines, canny and depth are great options. But what if you were to want something that's just kind of generally like the image that we're looking at? Maybe I like this character and I want to see it in a different pose, or I like this setting, this vibe, this style. And while it's a little bit more chaotic and unpredictable, reference only gives you the ability to kind of go that route. Whether you're going text to image or if you're using it in image to image, in either case, you don't need to download any kind of external model to use reference only. You just simply need to update ControlNet to the latest version. And because of that, it immediately became one of the most accessible options within ControlNet. All you need is the extension. For today's experiments, I'm using one of my own models and I'm using a graphic that came from that model. Because I know this model is capable of producing this graphic in this art style, that gives me a good starting position to remix it. With only using text to image and only putting the prompt as the word woman, I plan to have ControlNet do all the heavy lifting here so you can see how much influence it has and what the output really looks like. Reference only is a little bit more limited in terms of options and sliders, but you do have the option for control weight. And there's another slider to play with that influences how heavily the style gets applied to the art. Options like pixel perfect and options like previewing aren't really going to be useful to you at all. You'll see right away that the preprocessor for this is just basically the graphic itself. It doesn't give you a black and white version or anything fancy. As you can see here, a lot of the output is immediately chaotic. But sometimes that can be exactly what you want. You may get something very similar but in a very wild pose or something brand new. You may get a new graphic to use as your control graphic this way. And of course you want to adjust your sliders and continue experimenting, but also remember that we're using text to image. And once we switch over to image to image, we're going to be using image context as well. And those results are always going to look a lot more similar to the original graphic, if that's what you're going for. We primarily want to use text to image if we're looking for that chaos, if we're looking to lean more heavily on the prompt than the image itself. You can see with this quick image to image example, even without using a text prompt at all, ControlNet, just like with Canny in depth, has a massive level of control with image to image. And actually, rather than focusing on text to image to start, and rather than using those examples, especially when we start using comparisons to HED, let's start with image to image. And I want to show you what happens when you start adding stuff to this prompt with both reference only and with HED. Because that's where it seems like you're going to see a bigger difference between those two, in my experience, aside from the fact that HED does use a model. All of the examples so far have been reference only examples and all of the examples have been very basic prompts, for example, woman or just not having a prompt at all. So let's add the word red to this prompt. Let's make this a woman in red and see what happens to the images. As you watch the latent diffusion process, you can see a battle taking place between the prompt, the image and control net. And based on what you see and based on what your final results are and what you're going for, you want to remember that there are three different sets of contexts here, and you want to control those weights accordingly. You can strengthen your prompt if you want. You can strengthen your image if you want. Or you can strengthen control net. It's really up to you. What I've found is when the prompt is short, each word seems to have an equal weight. Some words can be insanely influential within certain models, but without getting too far into the weeds, what you're seeing is the weight of the word red in the prompt. So we could turn the word red up by assigning it a higher strength, or we could turn other things down by assigning those less weight. Or we could change the prompt to really just have the word red be the central focus of it. Or in this case, we're just going to change it to red dress and see what the difference is. So now that the text prompt of image to image is hyper focused on a red dress, you can see that there's not just more attention being drawn to the color red, but also more focus on putting it onto the dress. But also we have some examples where we got exactly what we asked for, a red dress. Alright, so let's move on to HED. 
First, we're going to talk about what it is, and I can really only speak for what my experience with it has been. So there's a good chance I may be corrected in the comments. Please see below and see if that's already happened yet. What you just saw in the demonstration with the red dress where we're replacing parts of the image or an aspect of the image, that's what I've come to use HED for. In your preprocessor list, you're going to find one called soft edge underscore HED. There's also one called soft edge underscore HED safe. They're both very similar. And just like with Canny in depth, you can mix and match preprocessors with models. That is possible. The other thing I want to make note of is that HED doesn't seem to have a 1.1 version. It has the original 1.0. And so to download that model, there's going to be a link in the description here as well. I did this really so you could see with just the word woman that it is in fact very similar just using image to image, control net, and everything that we've become accustomed to at this point. And just like Canny or Depth, it's very easy to recreate images in image to image with almost any control net model. But where HED really shines, in my experience at least, is replacing things like the background, for example. And if we do a prompt similar to what we just did with the other one, and we just change this to woman in red, you can tell right away that HED interprets this differently than what we saw with the other preprocessor. And if this is what we're seeing with woman in red, let's take a look at what would happen if, like what we did with the other one, we just change it to the words red dress. The results are easier to see than they are to explain, but you can mess with the weights and move it up and down accordingly. You may not always get exactly what you anticipate, but to me, both reference only and HED kind of thrive on the chaos that is latent diffusion. It's kind of part of the fun. If you look at the preprocessor output for HED, it would seem like the model kind of avoids those white areas, but everything else is fair game. So changing out the backgrounds or the dress in the case of this image, that's all well within its wheelhouse. And again, you can mix and match different preprocessors to get some slightly different results, but I did get the best results with the soft edge. Now, obviously, I wasn't going to leave it at just changing the color of the dress. Let's go ahead and throw this woman into space. You can see here the kind of results that I got when I just changed the prompt to woman in space. It's interesting to see some of the conclusions that the model came to in terms of the spacesuit and the background and things like that. And of course, if we want to really maintain that original pose, we can crank up the control net weight. Even with HED, all that seems to do is really further avoid those areas. So it keeps the outline intact. And you can see it has a harder time giving her a space suit and a space helmet like that. Switching it back over to reference only, you can see it has a harder time keeping the outline intact, but we can still get a very similar vibe. We still get a woman in space. We still get a somewhat similar pose. And the locations of certain things can be in slightly different places. You can see how appropriate it can be in certain cases to switch over to reference only for something like this. But hopefully with the addition of the image to image context and the visual examples, you have a better idea now of what reference only is versus HED. So switching gears and going back to text to image, I found using HED in text to image can be far more chaotic, but also can be a lot of fun. For example, using the prompt of woman in space gives a very pop art type of look. Woman in a forest seemed to turn her into a forest, and she became very tree-like. But like what we talked about in the other video, HED seems to have a lower sweet spot. And especially with text to image, if you lower the weight a little bit, you can get some really impressive results. While it may not have gotten a control net 1.1 upgrade, I didn't want HED to be overlooked because in my experience, it's been one of the coolest ones that I've had a chance to use. And hopefully this gives you an idea as to why. Now, when we think about the context of how reference only does what it does without using any kind of model, that's one of the things that makes it impressive in and of itself. Now, definitely download HED. I think everyone should have it. It's great. But hopefully you're as excited as I am about reference only being added to everyone's repertoire. I do hope you found this video helpful and useful and entertaining, and I'll look forward to any comments or questions that you have in the comments below. Like I tell you guys all the time, your likes, dislikes, all that interaction stuff really, really helps with the channel, and I really appreciate that. Stay tuned as we continue to explore ControlNet. There's a lot of features still coming, and still a lot to see. But also make sure you're subscribed for the Friday news videos so you can stay up to date on what's going on in the AI space. This world is changing so quickly. Anyway, that's my time for today, and I appreciate your time with me here today. As always, thanks for watching.